All right, hello and welcome back to yet another tutorial in Maya. Today we will look at using final gathering um, as a rendering technique to, uh, to make our text look good or objects or a model or whatnot. And right now what I have going on is basically I've just assigned a light dome to a scene. Um, very simple. I'm going to show you what it looks like in the actual render. Um, I'm just working with some text and here's a shadow underneath and basically everything else goes to white. Well, I'm using a technique um, called final gathering to sort of produce this effect and there are no lights in this scene whatsoever. It's just strictly final gathering doing all the work to kind of make our objects look good and cast kind of a nice shadow. Um, sort of underneath the object. So this is a good thing to use, a quick simple method to use. Um, if you have to do some text work or just want to display a model kind of rotating around on a turntable or something like that. And um, we're going to get a little deeper into this, but just so you're aware, that's what we're going to be doing. We're in Mental Ray, okay? And if you don't have Mental Ray on right now, just come up into your uh, window. Make sure you go to your plugin manager and make sure your Maya 2 Mental Ray, Maya 2 Mental Ray, is loaded. It's got auto load on. Okay, so once you have that, let's look at one one or two things about this. I'm gonna sort of show you. Here's my text. Here's a plane, just a simple plane, and then you know here's a NURBS sphere that I basically have segmented in half or so, and then that's it. You know, so really there's nothing special going on there. So let's get into this and see how we can create this light dome. Now, with final gathering, it's I'm um, sort of assuming that this sphere right here, because I'm using an incandescent value on the sphere, uh, it's assuming that that's the lighting um, component for the scene. So it's really cool. Let's just set this up. It's really easy to do, and we're going to be using final gathering. So I'll just come in here and do a file. I'll just do a new scene, and uh, I don't need to save that. So let's just create a, a plane real quick, just a simple NURBS plane. Go over there, we'll get a plane. I might go into shaded mode. And now we'll create, I think for this, I'll, I'll just create some polygon objects. Like, I'll just do a sphere. Uh, let's do a, ah, let's do a helix. Helixes are always cool. We'll just sort of create a helix. And we'll give it about there. And yeah, maybe something like that. All right, and let's create a, uh, let's throw in a cube. <laughs> so make yourself some random geometry. It's no big deal. What we want to do is what we're interested in is just seeing how this, um, how this system works. So, so there you go. Get yourself some basic geometry and do a quick render. And in your render, you should be using mental ray. And mine right now looks like that. Okay, nothing special yet. <laughs> So let's take a little closer look at that. First thing I might want to do is just um, select my objects. You may want to call up your uh, outliner. And I think I'll call my outliner up here and I'll just choose that sphere. And I think I'll just hit three on the keyboard and smooth it out. I think I'll do the same for the feet, uh, helix. And uh, eh, why not? Let's do, the, let's do the cube with a smooth, give it kind of some rounded edges there. So we smoothed everything out, that's cool. All right, now we have some basic geometry to work with. I might want to even look at my wireframe because sometimes I like to see it a little better. All right, so now let's create a NURBS sphere and we'll just oversize it, like way oversize. All right, I'll get inside there. Let's see if we can get our, get our control there. And there we go. So now we have a sphere and I might want to uh, actually make this plane sort of come outside the influence of that sphere. So we'll just give our plane a, a pretty big, just keep scaling your plane up, all right? And now we should have something that looks like this. We've got a sphere, and I may want to center that out. So I'll just come over into the, into the numbers over here and just do a zero and a zero there. Make sure it's kind of in the middle. I might do the same for the, the plane, although it's not necessary. Okay, now we got that. If I go into x-ray mode, you'll see the objects in the middle there. We got our sphere. Okay, great. 
Well, let's choose this sphere, this nerve sphere first, and let's just sort of take away the bottom half of it, and I think I can probably get a better view there. If you come over into your tabs, go into your make sphere ner or make nerb sphere one, and we want that radius on the end sweep. We want this end sweep to be at about 180 degrees. And by doing that, it, it basically cuts this, you know, NURB sphere in half. So that's cool. And, you know, let's just rotate it as, while we're at it and just bring it over and just sort of close, uh, close over the scene there. I, I kind of like to go in my values over here and make sure that my X is at an exact negative 90. And yeah, it just keeps things kind of consistent. And there it is. So we now have some geometry in a sphere. Let's look at that. I'll do a quick render and we'll see where see where we're going here. Right now you can see the, the values of the sphere back there, the plane. There's no real directional light because we're just working with the default light right now. So that's cool. We don't need to do anything else as of yet. Let's maybe come in here a little bit closer. And I think what I'll do, I'll come up here and yeah, we'll just stick with it for that for the moment. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep tabs on what's happening with this scene. So right now we have all the geometry assigned, and I'll just go ahead and do a snapshot of that right there, and we'll save that. And um, now let's make some changes. Um, the first thing, if we're going to use this sphere to sort of be the light dome, so we want to assign it a shader or something to give it you know, a quality. So I think just a standard Lambert right there there's a standard Lambert and we'll assign Lambert number two over here to this guy right here so select Lambert two and assign it back there okay now let's do another quick render and we'll see what's happening with it now that we have that number two let's let's just go ahead and it looks exactly the same that's because we haven't made any changes whatsoever which is cool but let's do this let's choose that Lambert number two over here. Let's choose that Lambert number two and maybe get into your uh, tabs. And what we'll do with it is we will work with its incandescent value. And I'm just going to bring that incandescent up to about maybe there. All right. And we'll do another render. And let's do a quick render. And you can see we're adding some incandescence to that. It's kind of changed it a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do a, a save image. So let's see. We were, we were there now, or before, and we're here now. So that's kind of the difference. Now, let's do something else. Let's come over here and activate our final gathering in Mental Ray. So the first thing you want to do is get your render settings and come into indirect lighting. And I want to show you this because you can use image-based lighting or you can use your physical sun and sky. But what we're interested in is final gathering. And right now you can see where final gathering over here in our lighting section is not enabled. Okay? And that's cool because I just want you to be aware of that because it will become enabled when we come over here and switch our quality from draft up to final gather. All right? Now, if I go back to my indirect lighting tab, you can see where my final gathering is enabled. And I have some stuff that I can adjust over here, like the accuracy, which will give us a little bit more, you know, refined look. Or I can mess around with my diffuse scale or some point density. But we're not worried about that right now. So everything's looking good. So let's do a quick render again. I'm going to come over here and we'll do a render. All right, well, that looks a lot better. Um, it looks better than the one before. Let's do a quick snapshot of that, and let's see what it looked like before. So there it was before, and now here, after we added global illumination, it looks a lot better. All right, but we're not done yet because we can control a lot of values in here now, and we kind of have a cool system going on here. You can see where it's sort of self-illuminating, and sort of creating its own shadows and whatnot. So we can start working with these properties. Now, we're gonna work with it as a dome in the background, but let's do something first that you have to be aware of, very critical with this, is that in this scene right now, a default light is working. 
okay? And that default light sort of starts out with every scene that you do in Maya. So let's come over into the common section, come down here, and go to your render options, and you'll notice that your enable default light is on, okay? Well, if I uncheck the enable default light, come over here and we'll do another render. And there it is. Okay, so radically different when you don't have that enable default light on. And that's good. We're going to keep this enable default light off for now. But, you know, later on you can always enable that default light or whatever. But just make sure that you kind of remember that your enable default light is off. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of that. And let's see where we were before. There it was before. And now that we enabled, took that default light off, that's what we're getting now. Okay, so let's come in here and make some more adjustments now that we can kind of play around with the parameters. I'm going to get rid of the render settings. I'll bring this over. And I think from my hypershade, I'll go ahead and make sure that I, that Lambert 2 is checked. So we're going to work with these properties over here. We're going to work with the incandescent value and the actual color. And we're going to see kind of what, what it does to affect this over here. So. I'm going to bring my render view over so we can keep an eye on what's going on here. And I'm going to bring my color value up a little bit. And then incandescent value, we'll bring that up a little bit. And we'll do another quick render. Okay, so you can see where it's starting to look a little bit better. I'm going to do a snapshot of that. I'm going to bring this color value up a little bit more and also the incandescent value. We'll bring that way up. And let's do another render. All right, looking way better. I'm going to do a snapshot. Now you'll notice that this incandescent value is sort of like the volume, you know, on the light. Just the higher you pump it up, the brighter it gets. So let's bring it all the way up to an incandescent value of white. And I'll bring my color all the way up to white. And let's check out what happens there. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and do a snapshot of that. Now, you may want to mess around with your ambient color a little bit. If you bring your ambient color up just a little bit, let's see what happens to this now. It should get just a little bit brighter. And it'll keep doing that as you make your changes. So let's bring it up a little bit more. All right. We'll, do a, we'll save one out there. So really, it's, it's sort of a, a random process from the beginning to sort of start working with this... Uh, with this technique but as you do that you'll notice that it uh, has a lot of potential for lots of different things so let's bring that on like that see what happens all right now you'll notice that there's some aliasing and stuff um, at the edges and we can fix that but first let's just sort of look at it getting this correct to what looks good to the eye i'm going to bring my ambient color up just a little bit more Maybe bring the diffuse value up just a little bit, and we'll do a quick render. And we'll take a snapshot. So let's take a look at kind of the progression of where this started and uh, where we're going now. That was kind of the beginning, all right? And then this was the second thing we did, then the third. And as we make adjustments going up the line, you can see what's happening to it there. We're, we're being able to control what's going on under this dome. All right. Now, let's say we don't want this dome in here. Um, if you just choose your dome right here and come over into your Make NURB Sphere Shape and underneath the Render Stats, you'll notice you have all of these things. Just um, uncheck the Primary Visibility and we'll do another quick render. And by doing that, you sort of can use this to composite, you know, if you did something special down here and you want to composite a background or something in here, you can get rid of this dome being the lighting dome, but it is still providing the lighting and you just don't see it. So <laughs> how cool is that? All right. So now that you have this going, let's look at a couple of things we can do to sort of, you know, get better control of the look in here. Of course, you can change um, you can change your your color. If I change my color of my my dome here, you can change that up to you know like let's say you gave it a, a blue or something like that. We'll do a quick render. 
there it is it's now casting all of that blue because this dome essentially is like a light dome and final gathering is treating it as a oh it's it's working its way through there and picking up all of the various refractions and color values of everything else in the scene so anyway just to be aware of you can do that i'm going to go ahead and change it back to white and we'll do a quick render and there it is okay let's work on aliasing for a moment i'm going to sort of zoom in here and if i go over here let's do a quick render and kind of see if there's any aliasing happening there there sort of is along this edge and you know there's a, a couple of different ways you can go about um, you know correcting this um, let's actually choose our helix there in, in most cases you're going to see where you have a um, you, you have a geometry anti-aliasing override but right now the one that we kind of want to work with is the anti-aliasing sample override and I'm going to check that and maybe bring the level up to one or, or two. And, you know, a lot of times that'll help clean up edges. I'll come over here and we'll do another render. It'll, it'll sort of help clean up the edges and make it look a little better. Um, you know, you may or may not see a, a, a real noticeable difference, but eh, it looks okay to me. So just to be aware of that, that's a good place to, to start with, you know, making an improvement if you see a lot of aliasing on your uh, objects there. So I'm going to come over here into the render settings and we'll go into our indirect lighting tab, our final gathering section, and you can see where the accuracy is at 100 right now. Well, you know, you can bring this up to say maybe 500 um, and do a render. I'm going to bring it to five there and maybe back off a little bit. And this is a, a place where you can start you know, improving the look of the scene. Um, it's going to add a little bit more to your render times, but the more um, accuracy you add, you know, the better your shadows and all that stuff's going to look. So anyway, I mean, this, this essentially just by using a light dome makes it look like it has a nice ambient occlusion, kind of has some nice fall off and, you know, whatnot. So you can work with that. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to come back on here onto my dome and actually bring that um, primary visibility back on. There we go. I'm going to do a render. Okay, so there you go. Um, pretty easy stuff. Oh, let's take another look at the um, primary diffuse scale. Um, sometimes you can click in here and come into your hue, saturation, and value levels, and maybe bring it from a one, you know, value of one in the in the um, from right there to the say maybe 1.5, and we'll do a quick render. And you'll notice you can control; it'll get a lot brighter, um, and a little bit blown out. But anyway, that is another place if you're not getting you know, a bright enough uh, sort of look, you can come in here and add a little bit more, a uh, little bit more punch, you know, to that. So just something to be aware of. For the most part, uh, I like to work with mine at one. That just sort of gives me like the standard value. So there it is. Now, I think we've covered everything. You may want to look at your quality section and make sure you know you're set on your final gathering and you're good to go so there you go that's sort of an easy way to make like a light dome and to do all sorts of you know just singular model sort of like highlighting a model or whatever and um, yeah so there's a million other ways to do this but that's just one quick simple way uh, yeah kind of fun to use real quick easy thing to do so there you go um, yeah Hope that answers all your questions on that one. We'll get to some other ways to do it later on. But for right now, go forth. Make yourself some, some light domes and some cool models and stuff. All right? And be a good person. And read that book. Read a book. Read a book. <laughs> ah, people need to read more books, especially the owner's manual. That'll teach you a lot. All right? Thanks for watching.